Sega announces Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics for Nintendo Switch. Damn it, I thought we were free. Mario and Sonic at the- oh man, these names are just too long. This is just such an odd series of games, man. Oh boy, it's Sonic on a Nintendo console! <gasps> is Sonic in Smash Brothers? Maybe we'll actually get a main game featuring the two major rivals in 90s gaming. Sega then said, sure, this is what you wanted, right? While totally bizarre in concept, a couple of the games turned out alright. Winter and London specifically, those are actually pretty good. But it's overall just a glorified series of minigame collections with Mario and Sonic Sonic's faces slapped onto them. And what's more shameless than that, you may ask? Well, portable versions, of course. These developers are gonna get as much money out of this partnership as they possibly could. So for only four of the console versions, not all five, they skipped one for some reason, but for four of them, we got games on the DS line of consoles as well. Can't, can't wait to check them out. Alrighty, Beijing 2008 for the DS. Couldn't even be bothered using the same Mario render as the front of the box. Oh, we're off to a great start. Well, the gang's all here with their glorious polygonal DS models in tow. I hope to never see Eggman gyrate his hips ever again. If you're familiar with the Wii version, there actually isn't that much different here. Just instead of using a ton of motion controls, you're using a ton of touchscreen controls instead. Whether you're swiping the screen back and forth, in circles, aiming to shoot a gun, it's exactly what you think it is. There are a few dozen events, each character has a series of missions that you can go through, you're handed Olympics trivia for doing only the most mundane of minigames that I have ever seen. Hmm, the first Olympics, huh? Okay, well surely the corpses of all of these Goombas hold this knowledge. Oh, and lo and behold, they do. Not good, not bad. It's the rest of the portable series where things take a different turn. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games! Oh boy, I love the Olympics. So, once again, as expected, we have access to a good handful of Olympic events, but instead of going with the same approach as the first game, where the DS version felt more or less the same as the Wii one, a lot of the events here actually feel pretty different. They are still essentially the same events, of course, but in terms of play control, they are a lot more intuitive, making much better uses of the touchscreen than first one to ruin the screen wins! Some of the events are even vastly different, being barely recognizable to the Wii counterpart. Wow, it's almost as if they actually tried with this one. One of the best parts of the Mario and Sonic series are the dream events, where they take a traditional Olympic game and then just slap it with a ton of Mario and Sonic fan service. They do show up in this one, but they aren't as spectacular as the console version. They do still offer a good bit of fan service, but nothing close to what you can get on Wii. While the regular events, oh boy, they are filled to the brim with Olympics fan service. Winter 2010 is simply more fun than the first DS game. I kind of wanted to actually get good at some of these events. But the glue that holds all of this together is what makes the portable side of the Mario and Sonic Olympics franchise stand out. There is a full-on story mode. <laughs> what? Bowser and Eggman are sabotaging the Olympic Winter Games by eliminating all of the snow and harnessing the power of the magical snow spirits. This is real. This is an official Olympics video game. With the help of the one snow spirit that got away, Mario and Sonic begin a quest to save the remaining spirits and bring back all of the snow to the lands of Van Vancouver. Oh, oh my goodness, there's an overworld. <laughs> okay. As you would probably expect, this is just a fancy coat of paint on top of a linear string of mission-based events. But there's actually quite a bit of charm here, and the music is surprisingly really good too. I mean, let's be honest here, if any game needed a story mode, it absolutely wasn't this. But regardless, it's genuinely entertaining. Also, apparently the trees in Vancouver have leaves that hold paragraphs of Olympics trivia on them. I, I didn't- I didn't know that. Oh, hey, look at that, it's Green Mario. What's up, bro? Ah! Ah, yes, looks like he is having a good time. And nothing in my 20 plus years of gameplay experience could have prepared me for this. There's a part where a Goomba gives Sonic the Hedgehog and Princess Peach a rifle. Yep. Oh yeah, and there's also a couple of wacky minigames that you can play too. That's pretty standard for the franchise. Oh yeah, that's right. 
Peach with a gun, thanks to a Goomba. This game is in my top 10 of all time. This whole Mario Sonic Olympics franchise is just so damn dumb, dude, but somehow both versions of Vancouver 2010, <laughs> they're actually really good. Following the Wii version of Winter 2010 was another fun entry, London 2012. So with the portable version, I'm expecting quality once again. And now we're on the 3DS, so bring on that next-gen Olympics experience. Okay, starting off, having a blank profile, the game calls you an anonymous medalist, and I can only wish to be that clever. Oh wow, the jump to new hardware really shows, the game looks super good. Environments are full and colorful, the character models are nice and detailed. I'm thoroughly impressed. Now the events in this version take a bit of a different approach. For many of them, instead of totally reenacting the event from start to finish, a lot of them were turned into proper truncated minigames. A full game of badminton is now split into a reflex challenge for singles and a touchscreen game for doubles. A full game of soccer is now just about the scoring part. The trick-based trampoline game is now all about simply perfecting your landings, and also clearly is just there to abuse the console's 3D feature. Oh man, it's as if Yoshi is actually spiraling out of control towards my face, cool! It's a pretty neat idea, honestly. The only thing that sucks though is that you're limited to a select few characters for each game. And that's super lame, man. Half the fun of these games was putting any characters together to make up these really wacky scenarios. Realistically though, it was probably to prevent more of this. Yeah, that's my guess. And there are a bunch of original games too, and most of them go out of their way to use all of the tech that's crammed into the 3DS. Motion controls, gyro controls, touchscreen, the microphone. Oh, the weightlifting game is wild in this one. There's this square and a meter, right? When the square is in the middle, you shout into the microphone. You gotta do the same thing for the shot put game too. That's, that's incredible. I'm sure playing this game in public looks totally normal. Ah! And there's something just endlessly humorous about Sonic winning a walking contest. Good on him. Always knew he was fast. Now, is this gimmicky? Absolutely. But by standing out as strongly as it does, it actually makes this version a lot more enjoyable. Like, there's this timing based minigame about grabbing a bottle of water during a race. Finally, gaming is saved, and once again, this is all tied together with another story mode. The whole running around an overworld thing is gone, unfortunately, but if it's a wacky story that you want, oh boy, you're gonna get it. This time, Bowser and Eggman are totally hyped for the Olympics, but they never received their invitation. So in a fit of rage, they then unleash a dangerous fog all over London, creating complete replicas of all the heroes. I know London is famous for its fog, but this is ridiculous. And the kicker, they totally did get invited, but the invitations got lost in transit. Oops. Now this, this is the exact amount of stupidity that I was hoping for, and I am thoroughly entertained. Having no overworld means instead, you have a series of cutscenes followed by minigames. So if that's your thing, perfect. Each chapter of the story specializes on a smaller cast of characters, making each of their dynamics shine a little bit more before they all start coming together to stop the evil fog. I know a ton of people out there, myself kind of included, really wants a main game featuring both characters taking down their main rivals in a glorious epic fashion, but something about Sonic taking down an evil smoke form of Mario in a judo match? I'm kinda happy that we got this instead. So yeah, with London 2012, we have once again another duo of quality minigame collections. Good job, developers. Whoever designed this race game should burn though. L literally, what 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 are these what are these controls? Now, if you're familiar with my thoughts on the console side of this franchise, you probably know that I think the following games kinda suck. The next entry, Sochi 2014, was a game that was so poorly done, I can't imagine what the 3DS version looks like. And clearly neither could Sega because it doesn't exist. So instead, the next and final portable entry is Rio 2016. Once again, the console version was pretty disappointing, and thankfully that same magic is captured here. The big addition to this one is a full game of soccer and a full game of golf. That's kind of cool, honestly. Doing the Olympic Games is fine, but the idea of a full sports compilation similar to, like, Mario Sports Superstars, but loading it with Mario and Sonic fan service? That'd be pretty neat. Despite being based on the Summer Olympics once again, there is a unique set of minigames here. 
They also sort of rekindle the dream event idea by having plus events. They're not as wacky and cool as you want them to be, but hey, it's something. There's a new story mode as well, but it's not that great. This time, playing as your me, you partake in gang warfare by choosing a cult and fighting for their honor. I'm not joking. There is an overworld once again, but it's just lacking the charm of Vancouver. And what's totally bizarre is while the individual events include ones that make the game distinct, the events that are tossed at you in the story mode are more or less copy and pasted from London 2012. It's almost a punishment if you played the previous game to be expected to go through the same events again. The not great story and the reused events, I really couldn't play much of this one. The whole gang war is just gonna have to go on without me. Also, the game told me that my rival was Silver the Hedgehog, and I'm pretty sure I've had a nightmare about that before. I suppose if you skipped that trip to London, then this game is fine, and having two games that are back-to-back -back based on the Summer Olympics, I guess it's foolish to expect a totally different result here, but like, they also didn't need to make this game. Regardless of which season of the Olympics you prefer, making a game based on winter in Sochi would have guaranteed a more unique game. If you really want to experience this series on the 3DS, only play one of them, definitely not both, and my vote goes to London. I mean, at least there you get to save the city from a smoky apocalypse. And that concludes the Mario and Sonic Olympic series on Portable. And like last time, we're ending things on a sour note, not my fault the Rio games are not good, but hey, it was still pretty cool seeing that these games are doing something a little bit different than the console versions, trying to give players a bit more of a single player experience. If you really want to give this series a shot, these two are the definite highlights. If you want to check out the other two for morbid curiosity, by all means, but these games right here, they're not, they're not bad. As for now, I guess I just have to sit and wait until Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games drops on the Switch. Can't say I'm overly excited about it, I'm just gonna play it because I've already played all the other ones. Everything I see about the game, it just looks to be more of the same as the last ones. Wait a minute, is that Sonic in a shirt? Sign me up.